I'm Matt Hinkle and today we're going to be summarizing our past four videos in this fifth video of our video series, Pump Operations. So when we go into pump operations, we're going to be looking at a lot of different pieces and components. If you have not seen those previous videos that we've done, please go back and look at them so you understand the concepts and the topics that we've already discussed. So in this, in this video, we're going to summarize all of those components together to see what we're trying to get, which is ultimately pump discharge pressure, what we should pump at the pump panel to deliver the right amount of water to the firefighters. So the first concept that we're going to talk about is when we have multiple lines that are the same length. When we have two lines, I have three lines pulled off the truck right now, but we're going to say that these first two are 200 foot, inch and three quarters, each flowing 150 gallons per minute. We would only calculate the pump discharge pressure for that one line it's going to be the same pump discharge pressure for the second line. So that being said, this would be 170 PSI to pump that line. We would not add another 170 to pump the second line. That's not the way that it works. We have 170 PSI delivered to this nozzle. When we open this second nozzle, the PSI is going to drop because now we're flowing more water, twice as much water, but we're trying to keep the same pressure, the same 170 PSI. If we have 175 PSI on both of these lines, they're both flowing 150 gallons per minute. So we're not going to pump two times 170 PSI. We're just trying to maintain that 170 PSI when we open up the second line, which means as we open up the second line, we have to throttle up to get to 170 to keep it there. Now, this third line, if we open the third line, it's only 100 feet long. So we know that our friction loss is not going to be as much as the 200 foot long. It's flowing the same amount of water. So the way that we would do this on the pump is we would pump 170 PSI to these nozzles and we can see that on the individual gauges for each line. Then when we opened up this line, we would gate it back to get our pressure lower for this one line. So both of these lines will be flowing more water, or the same amount of water with more pressure but this line is going to be flowing the same amount of water as those at a lower pressure because it's not as long. So we would also, if you have a, a truck that operates with a relief valve, you would set your relief valve to your high settings because if you set your relief valve to this low one, you would never be able to get your pressure up. It wouldn't, it wouldn't work correctly. So this is how we look at flowing multiple lines. We don't double the pressure or anything like that. We're simply trying to get the correct pressure and gate back or, or throttle up depending on what we need. In our next problem, we're taking a wide line uh, scenario. So this is going to be getting a little bit more complicated. We have 200 foot of two and a half inch hose that's wide into two 100 foot inch and three quarters. Each of those are flowing 150 gallons per minute out of a fog nozzle. So let's go back and look at it from left to right. Do we have what we need to work out the problem? Do we have our length of our hose, the size of our hose, and the amount of water moving through the hose? We have our length of our hose, 200 feet. We have the size of the hose, a two and a half inch hose, but we don't know how much water is moving through this hose line. This is an easy one. All we have to do is look down here because each of these nozzle, nozzles are flowing 150 gallons per minute. That lets us know that this line, the two and a half inch line, is flowing the sum of both of those, which is 300 gallons per minute. So we can easily fill this in and put 300 GPM because that is flowing both of these lines, which are 150 GPM each. So we work out this problem from left to right. That's the easiest way to do it and to draw a diagram. I think that's a great way. Every time you draw a diagram, it eliminates you missing common mistakes. So first thing we do is work this one line. We'll work out our friction loss. The coefficient for the two and a half inch hose is two. We're flowing 300 gallons a minute. So that's 300 divided by 100 is three and three squared is nine. The length of hose is 200 feet. 200 divided by 100 is 2, so we just keep simplifying. We should have 2 times 9 times 2, and that answer is going to be the friction loss from here to the Y is 36. So that's only one piece. We have the friction loss of 36 psi for this one piece of hose, the 200 foot long uh, hose that's 2.5 inches in diameter. The next thing we run across is the Y. The Y, if we remember, anytime that we flow over 350 gallons per minute, we need to add 10 PSI of friction loss uh, for that appliance so that we can add 10 PSI and make sure that the appliance is pumped to appropriately. In this case, 150 gallons per minute per line is only 300 gallons a minute going through that Y. 
So we drop down and we put plus zero. We don't have to add anything for that Y, but I make sure I circle that and bring it down at the bottom of the, the problem. Now the next step, if you remember when we said if we're flowing identical or, or hand lines of the same length with the same flow, we only have to calculate one side. We don't need to calculate both because they're gonna be pumped at the same pressure. So the only way that you'd be able to do this if you had different lengths or something is to be able to gate back with a pressure gauge on the Y. And that's extremely rare. You don't see that very often. So in this case, we only have to work one side, which is 100 feet of inch and three quarter flowing 150 gallons per minute. Coefficient is 15.5 for that inch and three quarter hose. It's 150 GPM, so that's 150 divided by 100 squared. So 1.5 squared, when we simplify, goes to 2.25. And then 100 feet of hose and hundreds of feet is only one. 100 divided by 100 is one. So simplifying our problem, we have 15.5 times 2.25 times one, which is gonna equal the friction loss of 35. So on this section, we had 36 pounds of friction loss. On this section, we had 35 pounds of friction loss. So we can drop down and figure out what our pump discharge pressure is supposed to be, which pump discharge pressure is the sum of everything from the pump all the way to the nozzle. So our nozzle pressure was 100 because we were using fog nozzles. That's something we have to add. Working left to right, we have our friction loss from our first uh, hose that we laid out, 36. Plus, we didn't have to add anything for our Y, zero. We also didn't have to add anything for elevation gain or loss. That wasn't in this problem. We go to the next section. The hose that's here from the Y to the nozzles is 35 PSI friction loss, plus the nozzle pressure, which is 100. We add all of those together, 36, zero, 35, and 100, and it tells us that our pump discharge pressure, what we should set our pump panel to, is 171 PSI. Now you may notice I rounded a few things here and there, but when we're talking about pump operations, one PSI or a half of a PSI is extremely hard to see on a pump panel. You're not gonna notice that when you're, when you're working on your pump panel. The gauges are not that accurate, uh, or you're gonna have some bounce on the needle on the pressure gauge or something, so you can't get that accurate. But when we're talking about tests, they're generally gonna be five or 10 PSI difference at the minimum, so you're gonna be well within what you should have for a test or for an exam. In our next scenario, we're gonna be talking about pumping to an elevated master stream. We're using a uh, one engine to pump to the aerial to feed it through a 200 foot four inch hose, an LDH hose. So we start off working left to right. We calculate our friction loss for this hose first. We need three things to calculate that friction loss. We need the size of the hose, the amount of water going through the hose, and the length of the hose. The size of the hose is a four inch hose, we have that. The length of the hose is a 200 foot hose, we have that. But the quantity of water is missing and that's because it's flowing through the elevated master stream, which is 1000 GPM. So we simply pull that back down here. We know that 1000 GPM is moving through this hose line. So we work our formula out. The C, the coefficient for a four inch hose is 0.2. So our next part, we have 0.2 is the coefficient. We multiply that times the quantity of water divided by 100. So it's 1000 GPM divided by 100, which is 10 and 10 squared is 100. Then the length of hose is 200 feet. It's a 200 foot, four inch LDH section uh, hose. So 200 divided by 100 is two. Then we work out this problem. 0.2 times 100 times two is gonna have a friction loss of 40 PSI. So we know that within this hose from this truck to the aerial is gonna be a 40 PSI friction loss. That's one piece that we need to know. We, we keep working left to right. I, I wrote this down here, 40 PSI goes with this. The next thing that we need to know is that general rule of thumb that we need to add 25 pounds of friction loss for the system itself, for the master stream, the pipe waterway and the master stream. So we add 25 PSI simply because it's a ladder with an elevated master stream. The next thing we need to negotiate is the elevation. This is 60 feet in the air. In this way, in this method, the easiest thing to do is divide the height by two. That's that rule of thumb that we talked about in the elevation loss and gain. That means we need to add 30 PSI because 60 feet divided by two is 30. So 30 PSI of elevation gain or loss. So that goes here, we need to add 30 PSI. The last thing that we need to know is the nozzle pressure. And it's a two inch master stream nozzle flowing 1,000 gallons per minute. So that's gonna be 80 PSI is what it operates at. So we add all of those things together from left to right. We add the 40 PSI of friction loss. We add the 25 PSI for the master stream. 
or the aerial waterway. We add 30 PSI because the aerial is 60 feet up in the air. And then we add 80 PSI for the nozzle pressure. All of those things added together give us a pump discharge pressure of 175 PSI. Thank you for watching our pump operator video series. I hope the videos helped you out and helped you understand pump discharge pressures and friction loss and how to calculate that. But for more videos and training resources, go to our website at www.boxarmtraining.com and make sure that you check out our download section. You'll be able to print out all these articles and print out these resources to share with your own crew and to be able to host your own training sessions.